So I am moving and I am so excited to be embarking upon another chapter on this amazing journey with God. And, um, you know, I'm excited to be moving on from this place. I've been here in this particular apartment for I'm going on four years. I can't believe it. I actually thought it was three years, but it's actually four. I moved in um, in August 2019. And so um, at the end of this month, July, my lease is up and I didn't renew it because I knew that um, that was prompting me to move on to the next place. Now, where that next place is, I have no idea, but I trust God. And so I'm taking you guys on this journey with me of just um, believing in faith that um, God has that next place already prepared for me. And just um, all of the things that come along with moving, because one of the things that I realized in my life is that when God has moved me physically, he has also moved me spiritually. So it's always been tied to a new level for me um, in the spirit, you know, a deeper relationship with him. You know, he's taken me from one level of spiritual maturity to the next level of spiritual maturity. And it has always been tied to a move. Now, that's not to say that I haven't grown spiritually in between the times because I have. However, I can say that every physical move that I have made has been directly tied to something spiritual. And so whenever I get that sense of that urge that it's time to move physically, um, and not just physically as far as a place that I'm living, but physically from a job or from a relationship or something like that, I know to take heed to what's going on in the spirit because God is also shifting me in the spirit. There's something that he is wanting to bring to my attention. There is something that he is wanting to reveal to me, um, something that he um, needs for me to move towards. And sometimes that moving towards that new thing means letting go of the past and letting go of the old. And so those are some of the things I'm going to be sharing um, on this eight week journey. Um, this series is going to be eight um, episodes. And again, I'm so four of them are going to be here in this place and four of them are going to be somewhere else. <laughs> I'm just excited to be able to share that journey with you guys. And so um that brings us to today's episode. So today's episode, I'm going to be answering the question, how do you know when it's time to move? Because that's significant, right? Knowing when it's time to move. And so I'm going to be sharing that with you guys um, on this episode. But first, I just want to kind of give you just a glimpse of what I'm working with in this space, because I will be, like I said, over the next four weeks, I will be packing, purging, getting rid of stuff. And I don't have a lot of stuff here. I'm going to show you guys in a minute. I don't have a lot of stuff. Um, I travel very lightly. I have learned over this journey and over these years to not hold attachments to things. I'm actually getting rid of everything in this apartment. Um, even if I end up coming back here, I'm just going to get new stuff. Um, Again, because I don't hold attachments to anything, I just have learned how to um, be detached from things. So I don't hold on to anything. The only thing that I hold on to are my journals. Those are prized possessions. And you guys will get to see when I start packing up my journals um, within the next coming weeks, um, just how important they are to me. <laughs> <laughs> those travel on a plane with me. I don't put those under the plane. I don't want nobody losing no suitcases. Like those come on the plane with me. And so, um, you know, I'll be, you know, sharing more about, you know, the significance of my journals with you guys later. 
as we prepare for this move. But I just want to kind of give you guys a glimpse of what I'm working with here. Again, not much. I'm a minimalist. I'm going to just give you guys a little quick tour, not of the whole apartment, um, but just of my living space because, um, you know, I do have a house guest with me at the moment. And so I don't want to, you know, be, um, I have to be mindful of that. But um, yeah, just going to give you guys a little glimpse of just this living space. Okay, so this is my living space. So I'm going to, well, how do we do this? <laughs> okay, I need to turn the camera around. Hold it. That is the beautiful sound of rain. How appropriate for rain on today. A refreshing walking into a new season. Well, this is my living area, and I'm um, sorry for the lighting because it is a cloudy day here, and so the light is coming and going, but this is kind of it in a nutshell, my little living space, and again, very minimal, like not a lot of stuff to worry about packing, so quite happy about that. So this is my closet that I'll be packing up. And as you'll see um, in just a moment, don't have a lot of stuff to pack. So I'm very happy about that. But um, yeah, I just wanna show you guys what I'm working with. So this is the closet. Not a whole lot of stuff. And that's the hanky thing with the cubes. It's not so tidy as it used to be because again, I am in transition and I just have stuff jammed up in there. But then here are my, my journals are all up there. Then I got my files up there and some stuff over there in the corner. I gotta get a good wheel. So that's about it. And these here, I gotta get rid of these. These are all my calendars and notes. Oops, calendars and notes. Um, that's it. So now I wanna get into all of the goody goodness that I wanted to share with you guys on today's episode. And that is answering the question, how do you know when it's time to move? So, I'm going to share with you guys a quick story um, that I hope illustrate what I really want to um, bring out in this episode as I answer that question. So here's the story. So, um, so back in 2008 was my first time, July 2008 actually, was my first time visiting my brother in sunny California and he had been trying to get me to come out there for like six years. Um, he had been living out there and I had yet to make it there. But this particular year, um, my friend and I decided that we were going to go and do our vacation in California. Now, when I went on this trip, I did go with intention. I wanted to hear from God what was next for me. And so I went purposing in my heart to hear from God that I wanted to know what was next for me. And so we go, we have a great time, and we are headed back to the airport. Uh, my brother is driving um, me and my friend back to the airport. And my sister-in-law is sitting in the front seat. And all of a sudden, we're on the 405, <laughs> and I just well up with tears. And I just start weeping and like weeping uncontrollably. And my sister-in-law, I remember her turning around saying, man, are you going to miss us that much? And, you know, everyone had a laugh. 
I was laughing in the midst of my tears, but I had no clue as to what brought on this like feeling that I had because it was like this heaviness um, that was sitting on my heart. And that's the only way that I can explain it was just this heaviness sitting on my heart that was just causing me to like weep uncontrollably. So I get myself together, we get on the plane, we get back to Chicago. And when I tell you that, that feeling did not leave me for weeks. And I didn't know what it was. And it was getting to the point where I was like, what is this? Like, why do I, why do I feel this way? So I started praying and asking God to take whatever this feeling away was away from me, you know, take it away from me. Um, and then in the midst of me praying, that's when God revealed to me that he wanted me to move to California and that there was a people group there that he um, specifically wanted me to um, minister to. Or, um, well, I won't say minister to, but he said that there's a particular people group there that he was sending me to. That's the word. He was sending me to that particular people group because he hadn't mentioned anything about doing any ministry at that point. So I remember being like, uh, uh, California, like I never wanted to live in California. So I was like, this must be of the devil. Like (laughs) I never wanted to live out there. And so, um, I didn't understand. So I literally resisted that call to move to California for three months. But when I tell you that God was continuing to confirm his word to me and nudge me towards California, it was like everything that I was seeing or hearing was about California. My aunt ended up moving to California right before I did. Another friend of mine ended up moving to California before I did. And it was just getting to the point where I I could not escape California. It was just, it kept being brought up. And it even got to the point to where my pastor at the church that I was attending at the time for a couple of Sundays in a row, he kept saying, there's somebody in here that the Lord is calling to Hollywood and you have to go. And so that was my cue right then that I needed to pray that's key, and I'm going to get to that later, that I needed to pray and, and, and seek God for help and guidance because obviously he wanted me there. That was the next place for me to be, but there was something within me that needed to break off in order for me to surrender to that call to move. And so that's what I did. I took a day off from work, and I just prayed for hours, and I prayed until I surrendered. And and from that day and from that moment forward, I didn't look back. I went to work the next day, put in my notice, gave them a month and um, started, you know, preparing to leave and left for California in December 2008 and didn't look back. So I tell you guys that story because I want to share Um, Three things that I feel are very important to being able to know when it's time to move. And I'm going to do that in just a moment. So how do you know when it's time to move? And how do you know it's God telling you to move? Well, I'm just going to share with you guys um, some little nuggets that have been instrumental in, in my life. So these are the nudges that God has given me over the years Um, Again, as I said in the intro, what I share here is not a blueprint or a template for anyone else's life. I'm sharing my story and I pray that my story, you know, um, will plant seeds of hope and inspiration in your hearts because your journey and your path will be completely different from mine and God may lead you and speak to you and nudge you in ways that are far different from, you know, how he has um, spoken to me and nudged me in the past. But I do want to share just a couple a couple of those, um, you know, signals or nudges that he's given me over the years. And so the first nudge 
is like the story I just told. It's just a direct word from God. He just told me, I want you to move to California. <laughs> and it was, that was it. Just like he called Abraham, get, get thee from your father's house into a land that I'm going to show you. Like there was no confusing of the situation. It was a direct word from God. And um, I'm going to get in a little bit at the end of this on how to know that is God and is not you. <laughs> so the second way, um, so another way that God has used in the past to nudge me, to let me know whether it was time to move to a new location or move, like I said, to move from another job or just to <laughs> get going is that you start to feel unsettled or uncomfortable. Now, I've had this happen to me a couple of times where for just no particular reason, I start to feel unsettled. I start to feel a little uncomfortable in the in the space that I'm in. I've had this happen to me like a job that I worked at where I started to feel like everything is going well, but then I just start feeling like mm, unsettled, like it doesn't fit anymore. And so that is another, um, you know, example of a nudge that God has given me to signal, <laughs> signal, to signal to me that it's time to move. I told you guys, this, these videos are going to be transparent because um, I'm not going to be recording these things over and over again. <laughs> it is what it is. And we're going to keep it moving. So um, <laughs> the next one is the loss of interest. And so again, this has been a way that God has signaled to me um, and nudged me that it was time to move on to the next thing is that I would possibly lose interest in something. So something that I was just really excited about before, something that I was passionate about working on, and then it's like that flame starts to grow dim. And then some, and for me, again, sometimes, not all the time, and again, I'm going to get to how to know when it's him in a moment. But sometimes it has been a signal for me that, okay, it's time to move on. It's time to move on to the next. So again, that was like the loss of interest of something. So another way that God has um, nudged me in the past has been the brook has dried up. <laughs> and what I mean by that is um, it's like the story of Elijah um, where God fed him by the brook, um, by the ravens, you know, were bringing him, you know, flesh and bread to eat. And he was drinking from the brook. But then when the brook dried up, it was time, that was his signal that it was time for him to move to the next place, which then God sent him to the widow woman. So in my life, there have been situations that have dried up. <laughs> And again, whether it has been a relationship, whether it has been a job, or again, sometimes it has just been a place that I was living and it's just like, mm, this season is over. Like the brook has dried up. You know, what, what was once sustaining me and being beneficial to me is no longer. That was a signal for me to pack it up. It's time to move on to the next thing. So the next one is... Um, pushed out by circumstances. So sometimes um, circumstances may push us and give us that nudge because, you know, maybe we're not aware. Maybe he's been trying to get our attention in other ways, but we haven't been paying attention. Or maybe you're just like me sometimes, a little hard-headed, and he has to literally like push you out of the nest. And so that those circumstances that you have no control over, but they have just kind of pushed you out of your comfort zone, pushed you out to where you have no choice but to move. And I've had that happen to me. I call them blessings in disguise um, at places that I've worked where it was like, you know what? We're closing this division. You no longer have a job. <laughs> and um, it's like, what? And so, um, but again, God was transitioning me. He was shifting me into a new season. Um, not only physically, but again, for me, they have always been tied to something that he's shifted me in as well, spiritually. And so um, the last one, so the last example that I'm going to share with you guys is actually 
um, how I knew in this particular season that it was time to move. And that is when a season or an assignment has come to an end. And that is how I knew in this current um, season that I'm in that it was time to move because in September 2022, um, the Lord released me and said it was time to move because I had gone through, I had finally sat still enough to allow him the opportunity to take me through the process, the healing process and the deliverance process that I needed to go through so that I could enter into the next phase of my journey with him. And I could only do that if I sat still long enough and allowed that process to happen. So as soon as that process was ended, he gave me the nudge and the signal that, hey, you've gone through this process. Um, it's almost like passing a test. Like you've gone through this process. You passed the test. Now it's time to progress to the next phase. And that is exactly where I am today. And so again, I am super excited about what's next, even though I don't know what is coming next, but I know God. So I know that it's going to be for my good and I know that he has me. And so that is what I want to um, share as far as those nudges. Now, the last thing I want to share is how to know that it's him because we can get it twisted. <laughs> Let's just be real. We can get it twisted and I have gotten it twisted before. But so there are three things that I feel are vital to knowing when God is nudging you and giving you that signal that it is time to move. And those three things are number one, having a relationship with God. That is first and foremost. You have to have an intimate relationship with God. And that relationship has to be cultivated and it has to be um, something that is, um, you know, your everything. Like, I don't even know how to explain it, but that relationship has to be foremost and at the forefront of your life. It has to be that you are living and walking in the spirit and being led by the spirit. And um, so having that relationship with him is key. And then the next thing, because all three of these things are tied together, because you can't have a relationship with him and not have the second thing, which is prayer. <laughs> prayer, communicating with God, communing with him, supping with him, spending time with him is so key and vital because the only way to learn to hear his voice is to spend time with him in prayer, spend time with him in your own personal worship, spend time with him in whatever way that, um, you know, the two of you communicate, but that's the only way to deepen that relationship, to get to know him. And it's the only way to be able to um, know his voice, which is the third thing that I wanted to say is knowing how he speaks to you. And the only way you're going to know how he speaks to you and communicates to you is if you are spending time with him, spending time in his word, spending time in prayer. And again, just spending that time with him, cultivating that relationship. And I can express enough how important knowing his voice is over your own voice and over the voice of the enemy, because there are so much competing for our attention. You know, too many voices. Like sometimes I have to shut everything off meaning phones. I have to go MIA for weeks at a time because I just need to hear his voice. Like I need to shut down everything else around me because I just need to hear from God. And so um, it's so important that you cultivate and know how he speaks to you. And I'm just gonna so how do you know when it's time to move? God will tell you. He is not playing games with us. He is not making us jump through hoops or leap over hurdles. He will tell you. He will nudge you. He will confirm it to you. And all you have to do is to just take these things to him in prayer and he will give you the answer. So that is it. 
It's not a blueprint. It's not a five-step program or anything that you have to do. All you need to do is take those nudges to him in prayer, and he will give you what to do. Because he says in his word that if any of us lacks wisdom to ask of him, and that he will give liberally to all who ask, but to ask in faith, not wavering. And so that's it. All we have to do is come to him in faith, trusting and believing in the way that he communicates with us, saying, Lord, I'm feeling this tug in my heart that you are leading me to move. Um, show me my heart, confirm your word, and give me your will and not my own. You know, I lay my will down, let your will be done in my life. And so, again, that is how. I have been moving and operating, you know, in my relationship with him. And it's my prayer that you will continue to seek God and be led in a way that he leads and guides you. So I just pray that, you know, this was uh, a seed of hope and inspiration for someone today. And I thank you guys for tuning in. Next week, I'll be sharing about what to do once you know. It's time to move. What do you do next? And so that is what I will be sharing on next week. And until next time, guys, smooches. So